Four months ago, I decided to pick up Unreal Engine and teach myself game dev. The first major challenge I ran into was escaping tutorial hell, learning how to make my own code without relying on tutorials. And while I have gone on to make my own code, I wouldn't say I fully escaped. However, I ran into another equally challenging aspect of game dev level design. It all started about two months ago when I first started designing levels. I was able to block out the level with the cube grid tool, but in terms of actually using assets and meshes to make the level, I felt stuck. I had no idea what the best method was, I didn't know what type of assets I would need, or even how to properly use the assets I already had. So I did what every noob dev does. Go on fab to download some asset packs. And that's when I saw it. The most beautiful asset pack I had ever seen. This asset pack almost seemed perfectly designed for me. It had the exact same aesthetic that I was looking for. I had used other asset packs before, but this was by far the most professional looking one. However, that came at a cost. My engine would constantly crash when I started placing some of these assets down. For instance, this damn floor asset. It looks good, yeah, but when you look under the hood, you're met with like 50 floor tiles that makes up this asset. And whenever I would try placing it down in my level, my engine would eventually crash over and over and over, leaving me with the familiar feeling that I got on my first week. The feeling that I wouldn't be able to make my own video game. I knew I had to find a way to design a level with simpler assets, but with me having such little experience in designing levels, I figured the best thing for me to do was to learn from the experts. Experts like the Valve level designers. I've mentioned before how much I love Left 4 Dead, and it's pretty easy to see why. Other than the mechanics of the game which I covered in this video, the art style of Left 4 Dead has also held up amazingly. This game seriously rivals many modern releases in terms of graphics and art style truly ahead of its time. I figured if I could recreate one of the Left 4 Dead maps, I could in turn learn some of their secrets. So let's go ahead and check out some of that. One thing that immediately sticks out to me is just how few assets I actually needed to make the environment. Most of the environment is actually made from a cube, which I used to make anything from the floors, walls, and even ceiling, a cube with a hole in it, which I used for window assets, two different doorway meshes, and a staircase. These were the core assets that made up the entire map. Everything else like the cars, street lights, and even trash cans were all essentially used for set dressing, giving the environment extra detail. This was a super big breakthrough because once I made those, I was able to plan out almost the entire map. And these were just bare bone meshes. No crazy topology or anything like a lot of modern games. These were just flat meshes with a high detail texture, which I used 4K textures for most of the meshes, but I honestly could have gotten away with just 1K textures. The next thing that I learned from Left 4 Dead was it's okay for things to not be perfect. One of the funniest moments I had while recreating this map was when I was recreating this room. I noticed that the dimensions just didn't make sense. I had been spending so much time to make sure my proportions were accurate to the original map, and I just couldn't seem to fit this room under the rooftop that the player starts on. When you're on the bottom floor of the building, it appears as though the staircase is pretty much in the center of the building. However, on the second floor, you can see this wall extended way further than the bottom floor. I felt as though they were hiding the second floor of this building inside the other building, but I needed to be sure. So I loaded up Left 4 Dead, entered in some console commands, and went to see for myself. And sure enough, there it is. You'll find that the living room does indeed extend past where the building ends. This honestly gave me such a confidence boost, not just because I was correct in my proportions, but to see such a renowned studio like Valve do something like this made me realize that my maps don't need to have perfectly logical architecture. As long as it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Saving the dev time and stress. And there's tons of funny little shortcuts that you can find all over the map. Like the apartment building that you start on has tons of these window decals on the front, even though inside there's only two legitimate windows. 
Which leads me into my next lesson, decals. Decals are essentially a sticker that you can throw on to other meshes. So rather than having to get a clean wall texture, a moldy wall texture, and a cracked wall texture, I can just use one wall texture and throw decals onto it to get the same effect. This not only speeds up development time, but also increases how unique your assets can appear. I use decals all over this environment, and here's some of my favorite examples. I used this mold decal to make some of the walls look dirty. I then used this crack detail to make other walls look like they're decaying. All of the graffiti on this map is also decals, piles of clothes, even things like puddles are decals. Honestly, one of the most crucial parts of recreating this map was using decals. So if you aren't currently using decals in your environment, I highly encourage you to give them a chance. Another thing I learned from recreating this Left 4 Dead map is just how crucial a solid color palette can be for achieving a nice art direction. A lot of Unreal Engine games get criticized for being ugly or looking bland, but I think this criticism is misplaced. Unreal Engine has some of the most realistic graphics to date, sometimes even reaching photorealism. I feel as though when people see a realistic game and call it ugly, I think they're really saying it feels like this game doesn't have an art direction, which I get. However, Left 4 Dead handled this problem expertly. You see, tons of the environments in Left 4 Dead are going for a realistic style, but what stops them from feeling bland is the color that the game uses. Maps like No Mercy or Death Toll have a strong blue atmosphere. Dead Air has a nice orange hue, and Blood Harvest has a faint purple slash pink tone. These colors not only make the environments prettier, but give the player an emotion to attach to, making each environment easier to remember. And it's super easy to do this with your environments, and I have two methods I would recommend you guys trying out. You can do the Left 4 Dead method and give the sky, the fog, and the sunlight a specific color for the map, or another method would be choosing a color palette for your assets to use, like a photorealistic environment, but all the meshes inside are within a specific color range. This will help the player connect with your environment through your color choice. Both of these are great methods separately, but when you combine them, that can create some truly beautiful environments. I learned a lot of other things, but those were definitely the most important, especially the first lesson. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love me some complex topology. But now I see that complex topology should be reserved for unique assets rather than things like walls and floors. That is, unless you're running an RTX 7090 NASA computer or something. But most people don't, and I don't think the trade-off is worth the performance hit you take. I mean, it's pretty hard to work on a game when you have to reboot the engine every five minutes. I know that recreating classic maps probably isn't the best method for learning level design, but it's something I've always enjoyed across my art journey. When I was into drawing, I loved trying to recreate photos that I liked. When I got into music production, I would teach myself the software by recreating some of my favorite songs. And I figured I would keep this up with game dev by recreating some of my favorite games. It's just a fun way to not only learn some techniques, but also get to see the steps that other artists took when making things that I enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of my newest project, and I'm excited to take everything that I learned from this and implement it into my own game. That'll be the next video, and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. I'm hoping it doesn't take too long to come out, but I have recently started a new job, and I'm struggling to adapt to this new sleep schedule. The unemployed art is over. Also, I will be going live on Twitch whenever this video releases, so if you're interested in getting a sneak peek, definitely stop by and say what's up. But if not, I'll just see you on the next Unreal Update. I'm Cassius Green, calling on behalf of stopamudholeinyourass.com. Sorry to bother you, but...